guys, I'm Chris Bowden with the National Science Institute and welcome to today's video in our striping masking awesomeness series. Today we're actually going to be doing the first coat of color. I'm probably not going to shoot a video on the second coat of color because that's kind of repetitive and I think you can figure it out. But we're going to start out today in the box. So this is my big painter box and as you can see I've got my liners, a wide variety of fruit flavors of tape, a bunch of different rollers and stuff, and candy. It's an important aspect. Today, we just need this. We're gonna use a four inch roller. I do a lot with uh, little three inch rollers, but I broke my three inch roller, so today we're going four. We're also going to need one of our chip brushes. We'll need a paint tray. Now, I don't know if this is actually the tray itself or just a liner, but if it is just the liner, they're sturdy enough that I use them. And I go through a bunch of them. Also, you can see in here that after I'm done, I let them sit. Uh, I let them sit for like two days and then peel the old paint out and you can reuse them. Low budget, man. And we've got some simple black because that's the color of this section, which is good. Black goes easy. And here we go. I'm gonna put about, how big is our section? Oh yeah, that'll be good. That there would be perfect. Leave the paint bucket to drip its one little drip on top of your box. You can, you can pick the paint off later, that's easy, but it's a lot better having it up here than on the floor. You'll need a good roller. Push that on, so we've got our roller, our roller frame, tray, brush, it's everything you need. I strongly recommend some tunes, but we can't do that because YouTube has no sense of humor about such things. So when carrying a paint tray, put this hand here, this hand here, and carry it like that. All right, so we're back in section R. This one's gonna be black. We've got our paint, and let's talk about how we do this. We'll go into detail on it for one stripe. Now you just, you'll see that I do this a lot. You don't have to, Thumb edges now, we're past that, but you'll do, you'll do this a lot. And we can see our tape here popped up just a little bit, so we'll see how that works out, but it should be okay. So when setting up to paint, paint rollers have this little hook thing here, your roller frame, and that's to hook it there so it doesn't wander down in. This little bit at the top here is your brush tray, and that's for little edging bits, and you'll see we use this a lot. So let's talk about the two ways to use these particular two tools. We've talked about a chip brush before, and we talked about, you know, you don't, you don't dip and then wipe on the edge. Don't, don't do that. There's no reason to ever wipe a paintbrush on the edge. It freaks me out. Um, the way you do it for this particular thing is I hang the, the roller frame way up there, and you just dip and either smack the edge a little bit or sometimes if you're in a hurry, just give it a wipe here, okay? If you have any drip problems, you can see I just gave that one wipe, that's a full drip and one wipe. There's no, there's no drips there. That's totally cool, I'm safe. So when you're painting this kind of painting, most people think that painting is done by like smearing stuff on. That's not what you wanna do. With this kind of setup, what you wanna do is just deposit the paint there in a puddle and shape that puddle exactly how you want it. You're not smearing like you're, you're putting you know, butter on toast. You're controlling a puddle because you want the paint to be relatively thick but not stupid thick. And you just wanna get that puddle where you want it. You're just teasing a puddle into position. If it's thin enough where you've got all kinds of, you know, it's that fuzzed out, you're putting it on too thin. If it's so thick it's really pooling, and will want to move on its own, it's too thick. So for the edging brush, you're shaping a puddle. Like that. And you want to use the edging brush anywhere that you have a difficult area or it's too thin to get your roller into. So we'll set this up here. Now let's talk about the roller. The roller, it's a paint roller. It's fuzzy on the outside and a hollow frame. And you don't just, I've seen this done and it blows my mind. You don't just dip this and roll it. You wanna roll it down in and then bring it back. And now you've got a heavy spot. 
Okay, and you'll see it'll want to spin like that. So then you bring your heavy spot up here, push it in again, and you're just, just very lightly, just a tiny little bit, but what you want to do is use this part to get your traction to spin it all the way around. And then you've got it fully loaded. Now, for the first couple of times, this isn't going to work very well because you have to prime your roller, which basically means fill it with paint, all the little tiny spaces. And it's going to, it's going to absorb a lot of paint at first which is why when you refill your tray, your second tray will always last a lot longer than your first, because the first one, a bunch of it had to absorb into your thing. So just roll it, and you can't do this too much. And you can see, I'm not getting more paint down here, I'm just kissing the edge. But just roll it like that. And what you're really trying to do is just even it up. And it's gonna be pretty uneven at first until it hits the floor, and then that'll really start evening things out. So you, want to, it, it, you don't want it dripping. You can see we don't have paint running off this. It's relatively clean. And then we just drop this right in here. And I always run a big one right down the middle. And then we'll set our lines. So you can see where our, our paint line is right here. I want to come up to about where the white is, about not quite halfway onto the paint. And you just inch it along nice and slow. And you can hear it. It should just barely make the, the sound of tearing paper. That sound, you want to have a little bit of that. This paint over here, where it's pooling, that's too thick. You want to have, so you can use this to come along and even things out. Now that paint there is a little too thin. When it, when it gets that staticky sound and it's all really high frequency, that paint's a little too thin. So we go over here and we just kiss the edge. See, most of our, our paint use in the tray is up here. Most people like that don't understand this. Use they they're all down here. They're just like rolling this and all that. No, that's why this this is textured, so it'll make it roll. And this is where you're just kissing that edge ever so slightly, and then rolling on like there. And then we'll dump some on here. Just work it around. Now that's that's a little thick, but we spread that over here where it was a little thin, and it all evens out. There, that's stripe one done. And I might be able to get this with a roller. I might not. I got a little sharp thing here. So this is this will be a tricky one. Let's see how much I can get with a roller. I'm just gonna load it on there. And go right down the middle. And that gets rid of the vast majority of my paint. Now it's on the floor, so I don't have to fight it on the roller. And I'm gonna lift aside, get right up in there. You can do a lot with a roller if you're careful. And it's not like I'm painting jet black paint on a pure white floor, so what's really the danger of any kind of screw ups? This is hard because I can't really see what I'm doing from there, so we'll come back here, we'll get some more paint. You don't have to worry about getting any paint on the tape because that's what the tape's for. So now we need a little more paint. And I like to do down the middle and then cut in my edges really good. Now painting with a roller is kind of like drumming. Don't rush it. Start slow and learn how to control it. Learn how to steer the roller. And speed will come, but don't, don't try to do it fast. Also with a roller, an important thing to keep in mind with speed, because it's really easy to go very fast with a roller. If you spin it too fast, the inertia of the paint on the roller, centrifugal force, will fling paint out and it will spray and you will make one hell of a mess, especially if you have black paint on a white floor. So, slow and steady, just be cool. Also, notice this hole here that I did not fill and totally should have filled yesterday when I had the white paint out. 
There's a little tiny pinhole here. I didn't fix that. That's gonna bug me for years to come and you know about it. Okay, now, now we're up against the wall and we've got this really nice three quarter inch gap. This will get hidden by trim later because this floor floats, which is kind of cool. So does the room too. This room, the room and the floor are totally separate and they both float on mechanical rubber. But for this here, I want to lay that in with an edging brush. So we're going to give us a nice, and I just one brush width is all you need. See that? That's why you put tape on the wall. And if I get a good brush width there, I'm set. Draw that out. And we're going to hit a lot of that with a roller anyway, just to even it out. You do it right, they'll never be able to tell where the brush was and where the roller was. Now I'm going to load this one kind of thick because we're getting into a big stripe here. And see, with the safety net of the masking on the wall, I can be pretty confident that I can get right up in there safely and not worry about screwing it up. See, you get your one edge, get your other edge, it's just fine. We're gonna go back here and load up that paint, work my top edge down, work my bottom edge back, making real certain I got up in the corners there. And now on my third stripe, this is finally actually loaded. It's starting to feel right. One of the real advantages in painting a floor is you don't really have to worry about drips and runs. So you can put the paint on relatively thick. You just wanna have it evenly dispersed. So that paint's on there very thick, but I'm okay with that because it's gonna get walked on by people. Cool, that stripe's done. That's a big stripe. Make sure you don't have any hair in there. That's about as fast as you want to do that. About what I'm doing right there. That's, that's plenty fast enough. I got one little spot I can't quite hit. So that tells me when I do the brush. Because see, it's, it's, there's no real hard and fast rules because the angles change all the time. And while I can get a roller up on some parts of the wall, I can't get on the other because the roller has a, a definite width and I don't want to run into this, so it gets tricky. A lot of this is all improv. You have to, you have to interpret what the space allows and what it demands in real time. Especially with angled stripes in corners up against walls. Now, once your roller is fully loaded, like this one is, it's all totally primed, 
you will have instances where you come across those cracks in the floor between the panels like we had before. And we primed those really good and that will help. But you also want to just put a little pressure down right when you go over them with the roller and you'll get that paint down in the crack. It's okay if you don't fill the crack, but it's important to completely cover the, all the white paint down in the bottom of the crack with black, otherwise you'll end up with a line and that will make you sad. Also, you may be thinking I spilled paint here. I didn't, that's actually a knot hole in the piece of plywood. And I'm leaving it that way because it's kind of cool. Also, don't paint your shoelaces. Guess how I learned this. So keep things tucked out of the way. And we're gonna pull that out a little farther this time. Right about the time you get really good at painting a particular shape in a particular area is right around the time you're done painting that spot. And see, so you go right in with the roller over where you did the brushwork. And the texture all just evens out, works fine. Probably gonna have to do some uh, brushwork over here too. Get that gap really good right there. Set your edge as you come across. That's my bottom edge. Carefully work my way into the corner and I got it. Then get your top edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like this is a really good thick coat and it's black so it covers super well. But remember, this is only the first coat. You're gonna come along and do exactly this all over again. I wonder how much of that I can get with just a roller. I'm only gonna put a little bit of paint on my roller. Even it out as much as I can. It's easier, this is really easy to paint. This is actually really hard because a small area is more difficult to do with a roller. Especially with a four inch. This is where I'd rather have like a, a three or even a two inch roller just for this one spot. But let's see what we can do. Done. And that is section R, first coat. Now we let this sit all day. And right now it's uh, 1300 hours, give or take. We're gonna let this totally sit for 24 hours and absolutely dry. And then we're gonna do the second coat. And then we're gonna let it sit for another 24 hours and absolutely dry. So your first day, you do your layout, and your masking and your primer coat. That's day one. Day two, 
you do your first coat of color. We call it 1C. Day three, you do 2C. That's your second coat of color. Day four and five, you let it sit. Just leave it alone for fully two days. Day six, you do your peel. You guys will get to see that in a few seconds when you click onto the next video. But today we did color, tomorrow we do second color, and then let it dry for fully two days, and then do your peel. And if you do it like that, you'll get perfect clean lines. So that's where we're at. And that's it for this video. So thank you for hanging out with me and learning a little bit about paint. And maybe I can help you do a little bit better with your masking and stripes. But that's section R, and uh, we'll see you next time.